Everybody, welcome. Andrew's Golf Academy, as always, very warm welcome. Thanks for tuning in, watching the lockdown video today. So, what a masters that was, wasn't it? Old DJ did the business. He was invincible. That guy has got the all-round game. There are no weaknesses with that fella's game. Very, very impressive. Um, yeah, nobody really could get near him. What was interesting, I heard one of the commentators saying, I think it might be Butch Harmon, how much he spends on his um, practice time and his short game in particular. Works with a track man or a GC quad, I'm not sure what it is. Just dialing the distances in. Does it every day, apparently, during his practice session. So, yeah, good luck to him. Um, interesting to see DeChambeau's performance. I was pretty sceptical that he was going to rip it apart. I'm a big fan of DeChambeau and what he does, but um, there's no way that you can win a golf tournament just purely by... Uh, hitting it that far. I mean, there's so many other attributes to the game. And I think he made a little bit of a rod for his own back saying in the practice round that he thought Augusta was a par 67. Um, <laughs> that was a bold statement to make. But I do, I do admire what he does and I'm sure he'll win a lot more tournaments in the future. Anyway, in that video, I asked people to send in any suggestions that if they wanted a little bit of help with their swing, I have a little bit of time on my hands at the moment. And I'm very happy to help you out with your golf swings over here in the UK. All golf courses, driving ranges, uh, golf academies are closed. So I can't see any customers at the moment, but I can come in and uh, try and uh, help you good people out with your golf games. So I've got some questions. No, that's not a question, that's a petrol receipt. So I'm not gonna... I jotted some questions down. And this came in from GTS Golf, who's a regular... Um, viewer on my channel. Hi GTS Golf, sorry I don't know what your first name is. And he asked me for any drills on impact position. Said he was struggling a little bit at impact. He was looking for some drills which he could work on. Um, my best tip to give you if you're trying to look at impact is to get one of these things, an impact bag or a smash bag. Basically you buy them flat packed then you fill them full of towels. I've done many videos on these before. Still think it's one of the best bits of kit for working on impact. Ideally you put it up against something solid like a fence post or a step or something like that then you can really hit it as hard as you want. And the idea is you get yourself into setup and just to start with you just go nice and slowly up and just get into impact. Get it soft to start with and just hold impact position. Just get a little bit of a feeling for where impact really is. So let's just do that again, nice and slow. Just, just going to unwind the body, get the core and the legs going, and deliver the club to the impact bag. Everything there feels very coordinated. Everything's working as a unit. Um, it really highlights sometimes some people get on this, you know, ask them to hit the impact bag, and they sort of get into this position, you know, where they've gone with the upper half of the body and there's been very little leg out or core rotation. So go and get an impact bag, great bit of kit. And you know, if you want to start building up the power levels a little bit and hit it a bit harder, you know, then you can hit it as hard as you like. But I'd start off slow with it and just uh, build it up. Gives you a feeling for impact. The other drill you can use without buying an impact bag is just to get out in the back garden, the backyard, uh, put a tee peg down or something like that, and just do a very slow motion swing where you just deliver again the club into impact position. And just, just get a little bit of a feeling for what the body's doing as we deliver that club into impact. The weight shifted, the hips have rotated, everything's kind of working as a unit. For me, I like to feel the downswing starting from the ground up, not from the top down. So there's a couple of things for you, GTS Golf. Second question again comes from one of my regular viewers, uh, Gary Smith. Hi Gary, uh, tips on measuring shaft flex as most of us don't get fitted. Well, my first answer to that, Gary, is go and get fitted. Um, you know, it doesn't cost anything to go and get a fitting. Most pros will give you a really good quality fitting and tell you what shaft flex and weight and length and lie angle and grip size and all the rest of it. So don't be afraid to go and get a fitting. 
people still think that there's this stigma about going to get fitted only for better players. That's a lot of rubbish. You know, everyone should go and get a fitting. But, you know, if you're just looking for a few indicators on what shaft would suit you, generalizing a little bit, but the first thing we look for on shaft flex is, is speed. Let's, I'm generalizing here massively and, and people will probably criticize my comments here, but that's fine. Um, if your club head speed, I'm not talking ball speed, I'm talking club head speed is you know, quite low, well, maybe with a 7 iron we're measuring at say 70, 75 miles an hour, you may want to look at maybe graphite shafts or lighter weight steel shafts. Um, if your club head speed's been measured and you're up into the 90s, then you're probably going to benefit from a stiff shaft, which may be slightly heavier. And somewhere in the middle of that, you fall into regular, but it's not all about club speed. It's about how we load the shaft and unload it and how we deliver it. All sorts of bits and pieces involved in making those decisions. You really need to get to a, an experienced fitting pro. You need a launch monitor which will measure club speed, ball speed. And the other thing you can look at is ball flight as a bit of an indicator. If you've bought a driver, for instance, and you're constantly losing that ball to the right, for a right-handed golfer, that's often an indication that the club face is too, the club shaft is too stiff, forgive me, and it's leaving the club face a little bit open. Not always the case, it can be swing faults as well. And consequently, if you're hitting a driver, for instance, and you're hooking everything for a right-handed golfer, it can be a sign that the shaft's a little bit weak. But that's that's kind of fraught with danger, basing it on just on that decision. So go and get a fitting, Gary. Don't be afraid to uh, find someone in your area who will do you a good fitting. And the third one comes from Charles Harrison. Hi, Charles. Thanks for the question. Charles is struggling a little bit with an overswing. It's something I see an awful lot of when I'm teaching. There are many, many reasons why a golfer will overswing, which I won't get into because uh, I haven't got long enough to really go into that uh, without boring you all to death. But a couple of way methods I use when I'm trying to get people to stop an overswing is to play a little trick on their brain. You know, let's just say this is you, you know, and you're getting into this overswing. Well, we know what's happening there for a right-handed golfer is that this left arm is, is really collapsing at the top, allowing me to get into this big overswing position. So the first thing I would maybe do is to make sure that you're creating the right wrist hinge on the backswing, the wrist cock. So I'd like to see you get into this classic position here, where the left arm's comfortably straight, the wrists are cocked, giving me this 90 degree angle. And then from here, I'm gonna rotate the back to the target. And unless I do anything very funky with my arms here, I'm gonna be in a lovely position. It's when we get this sort of collapsy, this drop, where we let the club collapse at the top. So check the wrist hinge first, Charles. Um, make sure that you're in a good position halfway back. And the other way I like to try and cure over swings is to say to people, imagine you're only gonna take the club halfway back. So halfway back for me would be something around about here. Let's say that sort of area. So I often say to people who are over swinging, just try and take the club back halfway. And I video them and it's, I would say nine times out of ten, most golfers take the club back a lot further than it feels. It's, it's feel and real deal. So half generally gives you three quarters. And three quarters is, for me, a fantastic position for it to be in. There's more to it than that, but these are just quick fire questions. So there we go. I hope those uh, little snippets help. By all means, if you've got any more questions on your golf swing or anything in general, just fire the question down in the comments below. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, next time I come in, I will uh, try and answer those questions. Thanks for watching. Um, come back again soon. Check out some more of the videos. And uh, that's it. Bye for now. Oh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you think the video is any good, give it one of those thumbs up. -y. Thanks again. Bye.